watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. You're watching DC News Now at 9 o'clock. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm Chris Flanagan. And I'm Susan Tran filling in for Thasmin Mahfouz. Tens of thousands of people in support of Israel. They are expected in downtown DC tomorrow. This is a rally that's set to take place right there at the National Mall. Yeah, of course, that means congestion, traffic, and a lot of road closures. Our Mario Carbone live tonight at the mall, where so right now set up for tomorrow is well underway. And Marielle, you're already seeing the impact on the roads. Yeah, that's right, Chris. On Madison, where we're at right now, parking restrictions are already in place. You can see the signage here. It banned parking starting at 9 tonight. And just behind us on 4th, uh, the road, it's been closed for hours. All of these changes and more, just some of the things you'll want to know if you have to be in or around downtown D.C. tomorrow. Fencing is up, parking is restricted, and roads are blocked, as thousands of people are expected to flock to the National Mall Tuesday morning. I think it's important to show solidarity with Israel, with the Jewish people. And the Jewish Federation of Greater Washington is hosting the March for Israel, calling for the release of hostages in Gaza and an end to anti-Semitism. The program and demonstration begins at 1 p.m. I think we can expect in the tens of thousands of people. Mayor Muriel uh, Bowser says no. the district is much monitoring the situation coming, um, and paying attention to the number of buses coming into the area. People who are coming, getting some familiarity with how to get around is, is going to be important. These six roadways will be closed from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., with others intermittently closed throughout the day. When I understand they're calling it a march, but it's actually a rally. It's going to be static um, on the National Mall. And the Metropolitan Police Department is working closely with local and federal law enforcement partners including the National Guard, to ensure safety and security during the rally. In a statement, a spokesperson with the agency said, currently there are no credible threats in the District of Columbia. We urge our community to remain vigilant and help our community stay safe. All right, now if you want to get live updates throughout the day on parking updates, uh, roadway closures, all you need to do is text March DC to 888 777 then you'll get those updates uh, and Chris and Susan obviously we we know we've been telling you guys all day we also have that information up on our website all the road closure information that is on dcnewsnow.com reporting live downtown I'm Marielle Carbone DC News Now all right Marielle thanks to so many people coming into town at least the weather will cooperate I know. Let's turn our attention to Chief Meteorologist Janetha Webb and let's walk us through the full day of what the forecast will look like. Hey, yeah, we're actually going to wake up to a good amount of sunshine across all of the DMV. You have an exiting cold front at this point, and so that's why you're seeing clearing out towards uh, Hagerstown. If I showed you a live look, DC, no clouds out there. So tomorrow morning, as you are kicking off uh, your day, temperatures, though, they are going to be hovering 20s and 30s. So wherever you're going, uh, we have a few readings that could be a little bit higher, but most locations uh, we are going to be hovering around 35 to 36 uh, degrees from Anne Arundel County across uh, the district, upper 20s the farther you go into western Maryland, a few 30s out towards Sneal and northern uh, Virginia. Driving up I-595 corridor, uh, running into some colder air, and then throughout the afternoon we're going to quickly start to warm up. Daytime highs tomorrow afternoon. Again, we are looking at uh, the 50s across most areas, upper 50s uh, with feel like temperatures due to a good breeze that's going to be picking up up to about 25 to 30 miles per hour is going to make the feel like temperature in the 40s. We have a huge divide right now, 47 for DC, and then you have Woodstock. Re reason being, you have an elevation change that is pretty significant and it's a little bit warmer from Kaiser, Cumberland, Luray as well. And then the farther inland you go uh, this evening, we are seeing uh, cooler temperatures. Here's the key player with that cold front slicing through. That high is going to make you super happy for your Tuesday going into uh, Wednesday. We're talking a ton of sunshine. I have the full breakdown coming up. Janessa, thank you. New at 9, the principal of Clarksburg High School in Montgomery County is retiring. Edward Oso announced he's stepping down January 1st. Now, he's been principal there at Clarksburg High School since 2017. In a letter sent to families today, Principal Oso thanks students and parents for their enthusiasm and support. He says he looks forward to the next chapter, which will include spending more time with family, pursuing personal interests, and staying busy on the education front. 
D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser issuing a public health emergency today, and this is all over the growing concern of youth violence. And that's right. Largely, it would expand capacity for kids to be placed in shelter homes and secure facilities. Our Daniel Hamburg joining us live tonight in our newsroom. And Daniel, some advocates are actually telling you there are concerns here about the focus of this order. So what are they saying? Well, Susan and Chris, this emergency declaration allows the district to make room for kids ordered into care by judges. But advocates tell me this still isn't addressing the root cause of violence, nor does it address the lack of resources for those kids. We know that we have too many young people involved in violent activity uh, in our city, both causing violence and becoming victims of violence. Mayor Muriel Bowser's youth violence emergency order will allow the district to bypass administrative red tape to acquire placements for youth at different homes and treatment centers, incentivize private providers to open additional homes and shelter beds for girls, and expedite renovations at the Youth Services Center for a new 10-bed unit. Having more space gives us that ability to ensure that they are safe. That's despite some kids being locked up for 23 hours a day because of short staffing, according to Council Member Treyon White. Rather than building jail cells, rather than building more detention, we should be focused on building strong young people, strong families, and strong communities. Eduardo Ferrer with the Georgetown Juvenile Justice Clinic says the mayor should be more focused on prevention, especially as it relates to poverty. Just increasing direct cash assistance and support for families is a much better use of our time and attention. The order also allows the district to engage in agreements for rehabilitative, therapeutic, substance abuse, and trauma-informed programs. We don't want our young people in secure detention. And we're working ways to find ways in a challenging system to identify and provide rehabilitative services. Now, Ferrer says the mayor should focus on increasing access to extracurricular activities and community-based supports that expose young people to adult mentors and uh, pro-social peers. He also underscored the importance of dealing with trauma and making sure these kids are not being re-traumatized. In the newsroom, Daniel Hamburg, DC News Now. Well, Daniel, thank you. Mayor Bowser also declaring a public emergency in response to a rising opioid crisis. According to the mayor's office, opioid-related overdose deaths more than doubled between 2018 and 2022. 461 lives lost last year. Mayor's office says D.C.'s opioid deaths mainly impact black men and residents of wards 5, 7, and 8, which underscores health equity and systemic concerns. This emergency declaration will, in part, require D.C. agencies to input suspected non-fatal overdoses into a common data tracking system. The goal is to help leaders identify opioid hotspots and offer better support to those communities. Two of the three people accused of running a high-end brothel in Northern Virginia and Massachusetts appeared in federal court today. Jun Myung Lee and Han Lee waived their right to a preliminary hearing but otherwise did not speak. Agents arrested all three last week. They're accused of trafficking women out of high-end apartments in Tysons and Fairfax. The U.S. Attorney's Office says that the people accused of paying for sex, they included high-profile politicians, executives, doctors, and military officers. Right now, none of them have been named or charged yet. Also in Virginia, a spree of robberies in Laconia has Fairfax County Police on high alert. Tonight, police tell us they believe two people stole cigarettes, cash, and food from multiple gas station convenience shops. One clerk was assaulted. Our Max Marcilla is in Fairfax County tonight. The latest on this investigation and also the message police have for that community. A Sunday night crime spree at these four gas stations. Within a matter of 27 minutes, between 922 and 949, police say these two people, captured by surveillance camera, hit each store, taking money, cigarettes, food, and assaulting one clerk who had non-life-threatening injuries. Anybody who's going to be brazen enough to commit four robberies in one night likely has committed a crime in another jurisdiction at another point in time. Police say after taking the items in cash, suspects left in a gray Hyundai Elantra. James Curry with the Fairfax County Police Department. Be a good witness. 
tell us what you see. Well, Curry says what happened here on Sunday night is not necessarily a trend. It does come a few days after police sent out another warning to this community about another crime spree. Last Tuesday around three in the morning, Fairfax County police say three people threatened a 7-Eleven employee at a store in Lincolnia and busted open ATMs to take money. Just minutes before that, police say the same group tried to open an ATM at a nearby TD Bank, but were unsuccessful. It's a different type of crime, a different style, but it doesn't rule out the possibility that they could be related. Whether these were the same people or unrelated incidents, Curry acknowledges it can be startling to see this in your neighborhood, but wants the community to know all of these investigations are still happening. It's a lot of work for our detectives, but there's no better detectives to do it. Reporting in Fairfax County, Max Marcella, DC News Now. Well, University of Maryland students and staff are getting some more time off for Thanksgiving. College Park Campus President Daryl Pines announcing schedule changes in a campus-wide email today. So Monday, classes will be moved online, and the next Tuesday, classes will be canceled. In addition, Wednesday will be an administrative leave day for all regular and contingent to faculty and staff. University will remain open both Monday and Tuesday. Now, President Pines cites a challenging fall for this extended period.